In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen. As it is Mother's Day, something came to mind from some years back. About 30 years ago, a book was published for children, and then, if I recall correctly, it was promoted in a New York school district called Heather Has Two Mommies. Could two be better than one? It was promoted as an attempt to kickstart what we know today as the diversity, equity, and inclusion movement by helping children become aware that there are many kinds of families out there. In other words, kids need to know that the traditional ideal of the nuclear family is outmoded and restrictive. There are so many other lifestyle options today, and they should all be embraced as equally valid. But a simple DNA test would produce a startling result. Heather only has one mommy. And even more startling, Heather has a daddy. I was in a crowded airport the other day. Hundreds of people were swirling around me. And then an odd thought occurred to me. Every single one of them has a mother and a father. Now you might say, that's not a very profound insight, Father Paul. You get the Father Obvious Award for the week. But is it really so obvious these days? Have we reached the point where the obvious is no longer obvious? Where ideology obscures plain and simple truth? But I'll take it a step further. Not only does every human being have a father and mother, every human being needs a father and mother. Each of us needs the nurture that only a mother can give. Each of us needs the provision and directedness that fathers give. Sadly, however, many children do not receive the complementary and holistic parenting that a father and mother together provide. Parents sometimes die prematurely. Children sometimes are raised in orphanages. Parents at, at times abandon their families. Divorces occur. A child is conceived on a date and the father is never seen again. These days, women are artificially inseminated by anonymous donors that the child never knows. What of such cases? Are such children lesser because of these circumstances? No. The children are not lesser, but they are lessened. You don't need a doctorate in psychology to observe how the lack of a father or mother affects children's lives. It's a fallacy to attempt to equalize all these circumstances as if children thrive equally in them all. They don't. The exception proves the rule. Every child has a father and mother, and every child needs a father and mother. Sadly, sometimes, children do not always have on hand in their lives both a father and mother. But more profoundly, a child who does not know his father or mother is a child who does not know who he is. Heather is being raised by her two mommies, but eventually Heather will figure out that she has a daddy. The time will come when she will wonder, well, who is my daddy? Where do I come from? Who am I? If he made, made me partly who I am, how can I know who I am if I don't know who he is? And identity reckoning 
is unavoidable. Now, despite that all I have said so far, I must raise the question, is there a glaring exception to everything that I've said? Doesn't his example overturn everything I just said? If he indeed is the model for the human race, what am I talking about? I speak, of course, of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of our Orthodox hymns speaks of Christ as being without mother on the side of his father and without father on the side of his mother. We believe and confess that Jesus Christ was virginally conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit without the agency of a human father. Was he then fatherless? So on the human level, one might think he had a fatherly deficit. Not so fast. In the Gospel of John, Jesus' hearers ask themselves, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? So in Joseph, Jesus had a human father, an adopted, or as he is sometimes called, Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, such that he lacked no human experience of human fatherhood. That's why Irish Catholics in particular, you know, in the Orthodox Church, we don't give Joseph the betrothed the kind of attention that Irish Catholics give good St. Joseph. He, he played an important role in the life of our Savior. But unlike biological fathers and fathers of families, Joseph did not constitute Jesus' identity. His identity was constituted in all eternity as the Son and Word of the Infinite Father. This is clearly laid out in the Gospel of John where Jesus says, He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I came forth from him, and he sent me. And then he prays, and now, Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory I had with you before the world was. Jesus had the clearest and absolutely most perfect sense of identity of any human being who has walked the face of the earth. Because in his human mind, he had the remembrance and the knowledge of his eternity with the Father. It's an amazing thing to, complicate, to contemplate. But he also had a mother, a very human mother. He was without father on the side of his mother. No man constituted his identity. It was his eternal God and father on the one hand and his human mother on the other that made him the God-man that he was. The importance of his mother to our Savior can perhaps best be seen or observed in the story of the wedding at Cana of Galilee. You know the story. They're running out of wine. His mother turns to him and says to him, Jesus, they're running out of wine. He responds, what does that have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. How does she respond? She looks to the servants and says, do whatever he tells you. She knows that he will not refuse his request. She knows that he will rectify the problem. What exactly he will do, she does not know. But she has the confidence in her son that he will take care of it. Such is the heart of a mother who knows the heart of her son. Such was their closeness. And in the final act of his earthly mission, what does Jesus do? 
He gives His mother to us. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus His mother and His mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw His mother and the and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Standing at the foot of the cross, the beloved disciple is emblematic, representative of the faithful church. Those who belong to Christ and are in Christ and loyal to him no matter what the cost. He gives her to him and by extension to us. And so, as she gave birth to Jesus in the flesh, so also is she the mother to the body of Christ, the church. His mother is our mother. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Orthodox Church, we don't have two mommies. We don't have two daddies. We don't have a father without a mother or a mother without a father. We have an eternal father revealed to us in Jesus Christ. His father by nature, our father by adoption in him. And we have a mother given to us by her son. A mother who seeks to nurture us Nurture in us, I should say, all that has been given to us in him. So, with her in mind, I say, Happy Mother's Day. Christ is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.